All right, let's jump right into the point of this video. I'm gonna teach you guys the basics of After Effects CC right from the start. Let's dive into After Effects CC and get started. After Effects is great for creating motion graphics, animations, adding effects to your footage, rotoscoping, compositing, that type of work. It really is super intuitive once you start understanding how it works. It can save you quite a lot of time in comparison to Premiere Pro for doing certain effects. While it may seem intimidating, after spending just a bit of time in After Effects, you'll be pretty comfortable and I think it will definitely benefit your editing. All right, so when you open up After Effects for the first time, you get this sort of welcome screen and we're just gonna hit new project. From here, you have a bunch of panel windows similar to Premiere Pro. You can go to, you know, window and open the different panel windows that you want. In After Effects, timelines are called compositions. In Premiere Pro, they're called sequences. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and start a new composition. And then we'll choose one of the presets, HDTV 1080-24, and we'll change the frame rate to 23976. And then down here where the duration is, this will be how long your uh, composition is, or essentially how long your final video will be. Right now it's set to 20 seconds. So for us, that's fine for now. We can give it a name or just leave it as comp one. And then for our background color, we'll keep it as black. We'll change our view to fit. Now, if you want to import footage into your project, just like Premiere Pro, you can double click and then you can import whatever you want into After Effects. Now, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of things in After Effects that you can click and change. But for the purposes of this beginner's tutorial, let's just stick with the absolute basics. So let's first start by creating some text. So we'll go up to our text tool. We'll click inside our composition window. Then you can type a word. Once that's selected, you can go back to your main selection tool, click on the title. And then in your character panel window, you can change it to whatever font you want, change the size, the color, and so on. Beyond that, if you want to move it around, you can simply click and drag it to wherever you want. So that's how you make text. And then now let's create a background color. You'll notice that the background is black, but it isn't showing up in our composition as a layer. That's because when you create a composition and choose the background color at that point, it's just a reference. So we'll go up to layer, new, and we'll choose solid. And then for the color, let's go to a nice light blue. And then in the composition panel window at the bottom, we'll drag our top layer below the After Effects title so that our title shows above it. And let's say instead of our blue background filling up the whole background, let's make it just a circle. So let's click on our blue background layer. And then in our tool section, we'll change this to our ellipse tool. And then with holding shift on our keyboard, we'll click drag and then go back to our main selection tool. And since we now have a mask created, we'll go down and click on our mask. And that will allow us to click and hold on one of the points and the whole mask will move all together. If we didn't select the mask, then we wouldn't have selected all the points and therefore you would just have one part that moves when you uh, click and hold. So let's undo that. Alternatively, you could go to edit, undo. And just like any other program, you wanna make sure that you're saving your progress. So save the project as, and then as you continue to work, make sure you are continuing to save. Now really quickly, if you wanna use the information from your text layer to work with your new blue circle layer you can in your composition window click on the blue solid layer then change your track mat to alpha inverted mat you'll see that after effects use the text layer to cut out from the blue layer okay let's undo that and then now i'll show you how to animate some of the layers let's open up our text layer and then go into transform and then here is where you can create keyframes for all of these for example if we wanted our position to start here and then halfway through our composition at 10 seconds, it ends up being down here. And then by 20, it goes up to here. It's as simple as that. We can add to that by adding some scale and rotation. So I've made keyframes there by clicking on the uh, stopwatch icon. And then let's say at four seconds, we want the scale to go larger and then we want it to rotate a bit. And then at 14 seconds, it goes back to zero and back to 100 scale. In the same way as animating keyframes on the text layer, we can close this and go into our solid layer that has our mask on it, into our masks, 
and then we can animate the path with keyframes as well. So with our timeline cursor at the beginning of our composition, let's click on the stopwatch for our mask path. That creates a keyframe at the first frame. And then let's go to two seconds, and then we'll click and drag and move it over to there. And then at six seconds, we will deselect the mask. This way we're not selecting any of the points. We'll then click on the mask itself, and then click on one of the corners, and we'll just move the one side. And then at 10 seconds, we will highlight our second keyframe, go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste. And that will paste the second keyframe to where our timeline cursor is. And since our mask layer is selected, we can click and hold one of the points and move it over here. That updates that keyframe with the information of the path over here. And then let's see what that animation has done so far. So it goes to the left and then the right part scales and then it resets to the right side. All the while our text layer is still animating to the end of the 20 seconds. If you wanted to create a fade in, you can go to mask opacity and change it to zero, add a keyframe, and then let's say at two seconds, put it back to 100. Therefore it fades in over two seconds. And beyond that, if you wanted to start adding some effects, we can go into the effects and presets, type in, for example, glow, and then click and drag the effect and drop it on the layer that we want to. And then in our effect controls panel window, similar to Premiere Pro, this is where we can change some of the settings to get a desired result. And then under composite original, let's set it to on top, and then the glow radius will increase it. And then you can start to see the glow around the shape. We can increase the glow intensity. And because we just added this effect, we haven't added any keyframe animation, this effect will happen over the entire composition. But if we did want to add some keyframe animation, you can start it by going up here, or down here under the layer properties in effects. And from there you can go to glow radius, for example, move forward a few seconds and then set it back to there. So this way the glow is on and then it slowly dissipates. And finally, once you're done working in After Effects and you wanna export your video, you simply go up to composition, add to render queue, and then under output module, you choose the setting you want, or you can create a custom one. Here you can choose your format. For example, I'm gonna use QuickTime, and then under my format settings, I'm going to use GoPro Cineform. I'll keep the quality to five. If there's no audio, you can turn the audio off. I'll hit OK. And then under output two, this is where you save the file, and this is also where you can give the file a name. Once this is set up, you can simply hit render, or you can open things up in Adobe Media Encoder, which will give you a familiar view as to what you see when you're exporting videos from Premiere Pro using Media Encoder. All right, so I think that's a good starting point for someone learning After Effects for the first time. These are pretty basic things in After Effects, like creating text layers or mask layers and animating them. But if you start with this tutorial and then move into some of our other tutorials, I think we have about three or four other ones that go a little more in depth, such as exploring uh, basic expressions in After Effects or animating shapes to audio or to do some compositing work to remove someone blinking in an interview. So you can check those After Effects tutorials on our channel. And if you want to help us keep creating more content for you like this one, just comment down below, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.